So uh, we will move on to uh, another coach that you really, really like, Chris. Like, really, really like. And that would be Gus Malzahn and the UCF Knights. Uh, Gus Malzahn last year led the Knights to a 9-4 and four record, and that was after Dylan Gabriel went out, um, what, third game of the season, I think it was, uh, against Louisville. So, you know, uh, who knows? They, they had to start a freshman quarterback last year. Definitely not good. Uh, Mikey Keene. Um, but the offense was, was okay. I mean, they were number 71 in offensive PPA per drive. Uh, this year, you got to figure out who the quarterback is going to be. Is, is this going to be uh, John Rice Plumley, or is it going to be Mikey Keene? Keene started most of last season, but we all know uh, Gus's offense tends to run better when you got a running quarterback, right? Like you, you would agree with That's that. Right. So, yes. so in that situation, you got the running back Bowser back. Um, four offensive linemen played at least seven hundred snaps last year, so the running game should be pretty good. Uh, they were number forty six in rushing success rate last year. Outside of the wide receiver O'Keefe, I have no idea who steps up. What, what do you think about the offense uh, going forward this year? I think they're going to run the football, and I think they're going to run the football better than anybody in the American. That maybe not named Navy, and probably a lot better than Navy. I think they'll be a lot more explosive than Navy, uh, for sure. Well, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, th- I think they might you're not right. run as many times as Navy, but I think it's going to be close. I, you, I think I that's think what right. Gus wants to do. He's got a horse like Bowser that can pound it. He's got some speed guys that can that can move. I, I have this team ten and two. I have them nine and three, but ten and two would not surprise me. Eleven I and one. I think they're going to be real. Real good this year. Eleven Real and one good. would not surprise me. Like I think they're going to be really, really good as well. Now that they know what they expect, uh, you, you've got two experienced guys coming in at quarterback. Uh, talking about the defense here, five of the top seven defensive linemen return. Um, defense was number seventy-eight in yards per rush defense, at number sixty-nine in rushing success rate allowed. That that's not great, but uh, but I would imagine they can improve. You know, with five of those top seven defensive linemen returning, uh, you hate to see. Big Cat Bryant leave because he was a monster. A uh, ton of tackles for loss, et cetera. Uh, but, I mean, you, you got a lot of guys back. You got a lot of guys with experience back. They're going to be older. They're going to be more experienced. Uh, basically, the entire two deep in the secondary uh, returns. And they were actually really good last year, even though they were young. They were number 21 in passing success rate allowed last year. Uh, you know, can they improve from number 46 in interceptions? They grabbed 11 of them last year. Uh, you know, you, you keep it at 11. Uh, you know, that that should be pretty good. About one a game. Not too shabby. Uh, on top of that, you know, this team, the, the thing that surprised me, if you go back and look, they were 9-4, and four, they won their bowl game against Florida. Their postgame win expectancy, 6.39 and 5.61. So this team really should have been closer to 6-6 six and six last year. But it tells me a lot about the head coach when you can win those close games and you win those games that maybe you're not supposed to. And that gives me a lot of hope going forward for, uh, you know, this team. Like, I, I think that they, they got through their youth movement in the first year, and now they got a lot of experienced guys. Uh, so you've got them 10-2. Well, it, like, it's not just that, Gary. Look, I, I love Holgerson. I love him to death. What uh, Luke Fickle is doing in Cincinnati is unbelievable. But those two guys have not been into the in the wars that Gus Malzahn has been in. in oh, his you're 100 percent right. They just haven't. He's got far more experience in big boy, big game football, and and I I just think it's only a matter of time before he's at a school like this with the resources that they have to where he can really take over. And what is this their last year in the American? Or are they going to be in it next year? He's only got two years before he steps up in class a whole lot. Yeah, d- well, it all depends, right? Uh, it depends on buyouts, et cetera. But this definitely yeah, could yeah, be yeah. the last year in the AAC. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, if he's going to do it, if he's going to do it, he needs to do it this year. Yes, uh, you're 100% right. Uh, my keys to the season, establish the quarterback early, hope some playmakers develop from the numerous options on offense. Uh, there's no proven game breakers right now, but I, I think they can develop those. Uh, The defense needs to work on defending the run, especially against the schedule. Losing Big Cat Bryant's 14 tackles for loss and six sacks is going to hurt. But again, you got five of the top seven back. You got a bunch of experience. Somebody is going to break out of that group. Uh, On the other side of this, uh, on quarterback, like, yeah, you're you're losing Dylan Gabriel. He didn't play most of last season anyway. 
So you already know what you got to hear. Uh, as far as the wide receiver situation, they did have a game breaker, and Jalen Robinson transferred from UCF to Ole Miss after spring. So that one hurt you. Uh, but again, you know, the wide receiver O'Keefe, I think he could be a game breaker. We'll we'll see how that goes. I've got him nine and three. You've got him ten and two. Uh, nothing would surprise me with this bunch. I could see him going undefeated. Uh, they they do host Louisville on Friday. No, uh, excuse me, Friday September 9th. Um, and then after that, you get SMU at home. You got Cincinnati at home. You play at East Carolina. You play at Memphis. At Tulane. Uh, this, I mean, they've got Georgia Tech at home. Like this looks like a really big home schedule for them. Um, I would imagine that the bounce house is going to be bouncing for sure. For sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.